Hello everybody and welcome to yet another Thursday Thinks. Today is all about my unconfident, nervous, rescued mare, Midnight. So as you haven't been here before, my Thursday Thinks are all about things that I think of or come to me whilst I've been doing my daily routine, tending to the horses, going to work, or anything that's happened or come to light, which I think, oh, maybe I should talk about that. So that's what my Thursday things are about. Today, obviously, is all about midnight. Just to make you aware, the recording is currently on Facebook, live every Thursday at 8.30, and it is then put straight up onto, Facebook, uh, onto YouTube two weeks later. So we're two weeks behind on YouTube, but it also is live on Instagram. Hello, Instagram. <coughs> so today is all about midnight so she is a black gypsy cob so full feathers really heavy set girl she's about 13 to about there perfect little driving pony or also probably a kid's pony at some point in her life but i'll get to that in a moment so she is a rescued pony she is from the blue cross and she, before I had spring, she was the one that I had on before that. So when, for those of you who've seen the YouTube video all about the Grey Lady, you will know that when the Grey Lady passed away, we decided that we needed a matriarch figure for the herd because we had two very young youngsters at the time um, in the form of Egypt and Pagan. And we wanted somebody there to to give them a little bit of a maternal hand, shall we say. So we went to the Blue Cross and said, look, this is what we're looking for. We need a matriarch figure. We need a nice mare. I don't need anything big. I don't think anything flashy. Just, you know, I'm looking for the right personality. And we went to an open day. We saw a few. And we're like, mm, not really ticking any boxes. And then we saw Midnight. She was called... Lilo at the time at the Blue Cross. You can change the name, it's entirely up to you. But <clears throat> she was Lilo at the at the centre. And we went to have a look at her and she was friendly enough. They'd hogged her mane and tail, which we weren't too pleased by because it looked as she looked like a right thug. Um that combined with the fly mask that they insisted that she wears because she also had uh, was recovering from ragwort poisoning as well. So her skin was very photosensitive. She got sunburned very, very easily. Um, but I, we put the head collar on and we went to take her up to the actual centre so that we could groom and things like that. And when, as we were leaving, she was screaming and shouting at her field mates, I'll be back in a minute! And it was just lovely. I thought, you know, you've got a lovely character. And I was there and I was brushing her in, in the actual centre stables I got, yeah, this is the girl. This is my girl. And I said, turned around and said that to my mother because she was there as well. I was like, this is another, this is another grey lady. We're taking it home. And the Blue Cross were really, really pleased because obviously with her ragwort poisoning, they had to be very, very careful of who they let her go to. Um, she hadn't finished her course of um, milk thistle. And I think she had... Some sort of medication as well. I don't think she was fully off everything. Um, and the vets did send her with a few things. So they were very concerned. And they thought they'd end up having her at the centre for a few years until they found the right home for her. But they were very pleased in the fact that we were there. And we're like, yeah, we know what we're doing. The majors had ragwort poisoning. We sorted it out. His liver is perfectly fine now. The vets are very happy with him. If you need anything... Here's my vet's details, you know, very, very open and said, we're happy to deal with whatever comes our way. We know what we're doing. And that was that was fine. They said, yeah, of course, you can take her. And she pitched up in the hoofing great big blue cross lorry that I think takes about six horses at once. And it was absolutely huge. And there she was, this little tiny cobbler in the back going, Ee -ee! through one of the windows and it was currently it was splashed with blue cross down the side of like yeah that delivery's for me yeah you bring her in style <laughs> so we got her home and she was she was very unconfident very nervous and she was 
um, we put her in the in what is currently what is known as Princess's Field because that was the only field that she ever really went into of her own accord. So, you, if you've seen a YouTube video, you know all about Princess. So we popped her in there, um, put electric wire, so she had plenty of space, and she could see everybody. She could talk to everybody at the fence. She was she was okay we had a little bit of issue with hay um i had to make sure that i put up a fresh hay net first before i took an empty one down as she got very, a very frantic energy about it sort of like a, oh, i'm never gonna have food again so it was always a case of here you go here's your food i'll take that empty one don't worry you'll, you'll have plenty more um going forward and that night when everybody was in the, came in to the yard where she can get to, she went manic. Like, oh no. She was in this place she didn't know. She was nervous. She was unconfident. She was just everywhere. So I ended up putting a pagan in with her because I thought, youngster, she won't mind too much about that. She will just be happy to have just a bit of company and she won't take her as a threat because she is very young still. So I popped her in and what did Pagan do? Went straight for the hay net, so midnight booted her. And it wasn't she poor Pagan, the face that oh, I was I got kicked. He's like, okay, okay, right. So this is background people. I'll get to the rest of it in a minute, but the background for you. So that was how she arrived. And when we first started handling her and doing a few things with her, she she wanted to hide. She hid within herself. She hid behind us. She was very much a, I'm not here. Don't even register that I exist. Please don't notice me kind of mentality. And she was very shut off in her eyes. There was no sparkle. There was no interaction with the world. There was no interest in anything. And it was a little bit heartbreaking to see because you could tell that she'd had a shock to her system in moving. She probably hadn't moved too long before um, we decided that we were going to have her. I know she was at the centre for several months, but, you know, they, they move the fields about, they change um, field mates because some get rehomed. And I think she's just a little bit shocked to the system. She didn't know who we were or what we were going to be like. So I completely understood. And we had, or I had a lady come out, um, Jenny Blakehill, who was absolutely amazing. I used to work with her down in Wiltshire with the Major and the black, the Grey Lady. And I was like, well, what do I do? She's she's just a, a stone, a lead balloon on the end of a rope. She doesn't go anywhere. I can't figure out how to get anything out of it, how to interact with her. So the first thing we had to do was get her into, interested in the world. So we had we had little treats, and I know most people don't want to work with treats, but sometimes it is essential to get the the pony out of its shell. So it's a case of, oh look, I've got a treat. Do you want it? There you go. Oh look, I've got another treat. Do you want it? There you go. I've got another treat. You want this one? Can you touch that bit of wood? Just this bit of wood here. And she sort of start to come out of her shell and be like what what do you need what what do you want us yes a little bit of interaction and we slowly got to the point where we point to something and you, you know you'd make it like it's the most amazing thing in the world it's sort of like oh well, what's this what's this what is this and she'd be like oh, oh i don't know what is it and she'd touch it with her nose and go good girl have a treat and she's like yes okay i can interact with the world they're telling me this is a good thing and i get something good for it oh this is a great thing and that was absolutely amazing and everything that we've done since then has been a stepping stone from that and we've gone from one thing to another leaps and bounds and it's okay some things we've taken from a step backwards on but we've also taken some leaps forward and it's been absolutely amazing but her personality is unconfident introvert so she takes everything and thinks about it Everything is in her brain. So every time that something big happens, she goes inside herself and has to think about it. 
but it also the unconfident side of the thing means that her first thought or go to move if something goes wrong is oh no what do I do and sometimes that's hard to deal with because she gets it stuck in her mind that something isn't good like the uh, f- a few months ago I had a lesson with Susie Susie's school horsemanship and we were trying to get her to go past a digger that was working in the field next door uh, next to the road and we're like right come on go you can go it's fine you'll be all right but she got so fixated on this digger that she would either not go past it or she went past it she was i had no control and it was we're going past this we're going past this and it's like okay and we did have on the double long line so that it was sort of driving prep still for her so she gets fixated on things And it's hard to snap her out of that. There's only so much that can be done because I won't force her. It won't go well. I know that she's probably been forced in the past because of the way that she she reacts to things. And yes, you can force her through certain things, but it's not the best idea. She's one of those where if anybody wasn't really looking they think that that thing going past will probably just spook her slightly because she goes, oh, what's that? And, you know, they don't see that she does anything big or crazy. So they, they tell her to move on. And the entire time she's moving, her brain's going, I didn't like that. That wasn't good. What am I going to do about that? Oh, no, that was a bit scary. Do I be OK? And, you know, if you're looking at it, you can see the internal monologue going, the internal cogs go, oh, that wasn't great. And if you're not careful the pot will go from a simmer to a boil in two seconds flat and she'll just reach a point and she'll go, no, that wasn't great. And she just... And she's one of those that I think most people would say would be unpredictable. But actually, she is actually quite predictable if you read the signs. But I suppose some people would have classed her as dangerous in a way because that unconfidence, that introverted... That fact that she needs that time to figure out that that was okay and that she's safe and that she can trust you, I don't think some people would have appreciated that. And I don't think she did in the past because if you ask her to do anything more than a walk when you're riding her, she she won't do it, not unless she's got real incentive. And by incentive, I don't mean smacking her, I mean... Has she got a reason to go over there? I make the reason of you go over there at a trot, you can eat a bit of grass. And that gets me a trot straight away. But that's taken me two years to get to that point where she understands that I'm trying to get her to a place because she, what she'll get when she's there is exactly what she wants. So with her, it's a constant mind wonder my melting situation of trying to figure out how to make everything a safe place for her make everything okay for her mentally which is what made me trigger the decision to talk about this today is that there's a pub nearby and on a wednesday they have bikers come to the bar which is great you know nothing against bikers in general they you know you've got one your hobby i've got mine you ride something with two wheels i ride ride something with four legs you know it's it's general appreciation which is is awesome but they haven't been there for the past year because of covid and having her realize that there are people nearby because there haven't been people nearby for ages because of COVID. And there sometimes are loud motorbikes that peel away from the local pub at a great neck speed with a hell of a lot of noise. And that's okay. But that's a big shock to her system because she's gotten used to it being quiet all the time around us. She's gotten used to nobody being there. 
So when the pub reopened and the first and second and third lot of bikers came, it really upset her system. It really, really upset her mentally. So we we brought her out to brush her, and this is where we, we figured out that actually she wasn't okay because her head was up. And it was like she was back to almost where she was when we first got her, just after she'd come out of her shell enough to interact with the world, and she came out of her shell to think that the world is a scary place. So she was, you know, trying to brush her, and her head was up, and every little leaf that went rustled, her ears would flick to it, and she'd be, oh, 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 I need to face the noise, I need to see what's coming. And over time, we've gotten to the point where you start brushing her, and she falls asleep. And that has been a true true testament of giving her time, giving her space. But when we took her out the other day and her head was high and things were making her flinch, it was like, something is very wrong. This is not the good lady that we've had for the past almost year where she's been confident enough to stand there and fall asleep to, to us just brushing her. So it took us a while. We, you know, you run your hands over her, making sure she's okay. She hasn't got any injuries. She hasn't been, I don't know, booted by Egypt because she's got in the way of something, or you know, she's been scared by something and she's ploughed into something. You know, checking that she's physically okay before then assessing them mentally. Because if I find that there's something physical wrong, it's easier to assess the mental. Whereas if there's nothing physically wrong, then the mental just that little bit different and you've got to really assess of what's happening outside what can you see what can you hear and you you can get a little bit neurotic about it but eventually we figured out that actually it was the motorbikes and people because there are also people at the pub as well as just motorbikes so those those two added together near her when she hasn't been used to it made her into a nervous wreck again or well, not a wreck but enough that she was questioning things again rather than finding relaxation she was in flight or fight mode and her answer is always flies but we got there by m- me holding the rope whilst my mother was br- gently brushing her I was focused on her in the way that she's happy she's always happy when you're facing her standing in front of her I think it's a um, a prey thing because you're watching her back and she's watching yours and she can stand there because she knows that you're keeping an eye on her and it makes her feel safe now when you're working or doing activities with her and you're trying to do groundwork and she doesn't want to stand next to you she wants you right in front of her that can be a little bit of an issue but when it comes to things like her needing to feel safe I know that in standing in front of her and taking a relaxed pose she knows that it's okay and actually by the time my mother had brushed one side and we got to the other she was starting to relax and find who she was again but it's interesting because how many people would take that time to figure that out especially with someone with five horses you know, I used when I used to be at the livery yard that I was with the major, that sort of thing. It was just like, oh, he's just he's just having a bad day, or oh, she's just you know having a bit of a funny. Oh, well, actually, no, she wasn't having a bit of a funny. She felt unsafe within her own home. So it does feed to my neuroticism of making sure that people respect the boundaries of the land. And that people respect the horses that I have on it. Because having horses, people think that, you know, they're just horses and it's like a petting zoo and they just walk up to the fence going, oh, it's a horsey. You wouldn't do it to a dog because you don't know if you're going to get bitten. And yet as soon as somebody sees a horse, they think it's okay. But actually... In you walking up to midnight and she doesn't know you, she's more than likely to either A, injure herself, B, injure the other members of the herd because she's concerned and nervous, or C, 
hurt whoever it is that's trying to talk to her. I mean, today, even my grandmother, she, she was over the yard gate and she was brandishing hay at her, trying to get her to eat it. And she was stood back and looking at her as if she was the craziest person in the entire world. And it made me think again of, is she feeling unsafe in her own environment? Because grandma doesn't usually interact with her. And she was brandishing something at her. But thankfully, when I went to check on her and how she was mentally, she was okay because the other members of the herd, particularly Egypt, was t- were telling her to go away, which I suppose some people might not think is good. But my grandmother doesn't have the right energy around the horses. She comes up with quite a... a I don't know what the word is, sort of like chiding, sort of like a me, 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 which... Is, is her way of where she'd been brought up of animals do as they're told. So she was there, come on, come on, eat the hay. And you, you, no, no, you don't come near me, go on, I don't need you. But that's not the energy that they're used to. So it makes me also a little bit neurotic over people's energy. When they're around my herd, when they're supposed to be around my herd, that is. So it means that I can be quite strict on my mother, sort of like, can you relax, please? And, you know, things like that. And, yeah, OK, when people say, oh, you've got horses, can I come for a ride? No, can I come crash your car? It's the same principle. They don't know They don't know my horses. They don't know how I do it. They don't know the personalities. Sometimes people don't care. They just think it's a horse and it's nice to sit on and go for a wander. Actually... The principle that's quite rude, isn't it? Because you won't walk up to somebody else and say, oh, you've got a back, can I jump on it? Can you take me for a piggyback ride when you've never met them before? Especially if they're speaking another language. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It sends me around the twist. It, it, it does. It makes me neurotic. It sends me around the twist of the fact that people see horses as objects to sit on and objects or sweet little animals to feed not thinking that their actions do have serious consequences when they're not there. By the time they, they've gone, they don't see what's happened. They don't see the midnight falling apart mentally because she's nervous and she is a rescue horse. We don't know what's happened to her in the past life. We do know that she, it's not been great because of the way that she reacts to certain things. We do know that somebody has been very mean to that poor girl and she had been forced to do a lot of things she doesn't want to do. Which is probably why she's been rescued, you know. But people don't think of these things, do they? Anyway, it's turned into slightly a wrong sort of rant. I didn't mean to go down a people are evil route. It's more of a case of my girl is unconfident, my girl is nervous, my girl is a rescue horse or pony. And the implications of that. And I gone down round to lane. But, you know, that that's where my mind goes into, ugh, people. They don't understand. Some people don't even try to understand. And it's a case of just hit it again to do what you want. No. In being nice to her, in giving her all the time in the world, she's become interested in the world again. She's eager to do things. You put a heart driving harness on her and attach her to a tractor tire and she's in work mode and she will focus and she will do. You put a saddle on her, it's a slightly different story. She's one of <laughs> this thing. Because I don't think that she'd been driven before she came to us. If she had, it would have been very young in her life, you know, when she was sort of like Pagan's age, maybe. But she associates harness and driving technically with what she's got here so it's a positive thing for her and it puts her in the right mindset and that's something that I'm constantly working on put her in the right mindset getting her interested in what we're doing getting her eager to do it now while we may never be able to properly drive her we may never be able to just go and get lost somewhere she will probably only ever do the same route again and again and again because that will give her security that will give her confidence that will make her happy but at the end of the day that's my goal to make her happy because 
that's what she deserves. She's had some really bad bits in her life and she deserves to have quiet tranquility, happiness, you know, joyfulness in the rest of her days. And that's my job to give it to her as the person who's decided to take her on. Now, she's healthy in the fact that her liver, touch wood, is fine. And I know that I am doing everything I can for her. If she's on a Paddock Paradise track system, she can walk as much as she wants to. And she does. She's packed full of muscle. The muscle on that girl, that booty is just gorgeous. And it is strong and it is powerful. What that girl can pull is just a tractor tire. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Which is great. And yeah, okay, she is a little bit jiggly and juicy in some places. But she's got herself to the way that she wanted to be at. When she first came, she was eating everything in sight. She put on a hell of a lot of weight. I mean, she was even rivaling the major. And the major is, you know, 15 two, and not exactly stocky, but he's not exactly dainty either as a warm blood. And now she's more where she's supposed to be, which is awesome. And... I cannot wait to see where we get to and how much driving we can get out of her or get out of her, encourage her to find peace in, or whether it will just be that she'll do work around around the, the land, around the farms or chain harrowing and stuff like that. But if that makes her happy to have an activity to do, a job, if you will, and have it within a safe environment that makes her feel happy, safe and calm, then that's what she's going to get. I'm not going to force her to do scurries and all sorts of driving activities. And I certainly won't force her to do riding activities because there's no point. My my riding horse is going to be Egypt. My mother's riding horse is going to be pagan. Midnight can do what she likes and what she's happy to, to do. So that's my ramble about each uh, about midnight i was gonna go egypt then that, that boy as soon as you've mentioned egypt on egypt my boy but no this is all about midnight so that was all about her and yes i did go off on a bit of a tangent i hope i didn't lose you anywhere along there now the also the reason why i'm talking about her is next wednesday on the youtube channel there'll be a video called meet midnight where you can learn a little bit more about her see some lovely pictures of her, see some lovely video clips of her, because she's very photogenic. You will find that in my phone there are either pictures of Midnight or of Egypt. So I'm going to show her off to the best extent I can. So make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel and click the little bell icon so you get a notification as soon as that video is posted. Also make sure that you're connected to the Facebook page where there's always more information for you. Also, have you joined the Facebook group yet? It's a great little community over there with little extra tidbits that you won't find on any of the other platforms. And also check us out on Instagram, we're naturally underscore Willa. There's actually daily updates on the herd. And that is me for this week. Next week, I'll be talking about something a little bit different again. And it will be connected to the video that I'll be putting out the following Wednesday. So I hope I've piqued your interest. If not, Come anyway. I'll be talking at 8.30 as per usual on Thursday and I'll see you all soon. Thanks guys. Bye.